It's been about three years since I built a hex beam on camera. I want to emphasize the on camera part for people like KOMRD that want to tell me I can't build antennas. So this is the brand new 2023 version of the Buddy Hex, the hex beam from Buddy Pole. I got brand new legs. And since then, what's changed is, well, first of all, the winders have changed. These are new winders that I had. These are new winders that I got from Buddy Pole. Two elements on that winder, two on that winder, two on that winder. Instead of the ring terminals, it now has loop terminals that we will put onto this mast after we build it. These are the same guy wires and guy rings that they had last time. He changed the tension, calls it a uh, tensioner, Buddy Hex tensioner. He changed it to yellow from blue, and he put a neat sticker on the bag. So that ought to increase the, the gain by like 10 or 12 dB. <laughs> this right here will be explained later for Don in 5 SKT. And then of course we've got the Mastworks tripod. This is the 30 foot Mastworks tripod, and we're gonna put this all together now, so stay tuned. All right, specifically for Don. Don had a good question. I like to tease Don, he's a good sport. But he actually had a good question. This is the mast, the center mast, and the Mastworks tripod. And this threaded top piece is for the original Buddy Pole Deluxe, the single element dipole that he makes. So what we do is we take this off, if I can do it with one hand, because I'm holding, one holding the camera with one hand. Right there, what we do is push that button in, take that off, and then the hex beam, the Buddy Hex, sits on top of this. So we don't use this at all. And, and it's something I didn't include in my last video, and Don was asking about it because he recently got a hex beam. Hex beams are shipping, so be patient if you're on the waiting list. But it was a good question. It was something I didn't cover in my first video, so thanks, Don, for pointing that out. So what we do is we take the center mast out. This is the seven-section mast that comes with the 30-foot Mastworks tripod, and then we put in this build mast. And this is done specifically for people who are five foot three inches tall, like myself, who don't want to build the hex beam when it's up here in the air. So you get to build the hex beam from down here on the bottom. And then the hex beam itself sits up three or four or five different dip feet like that. So you'll see that here in a minute. So stay tuned and keep watching for what it looks like when it's done. But this center mast right here replaces this piece that comes out of the middle of the tripod. And then we insert this piece here so that we can build it lower to the ground. So let's get started. Okay, step one, well, step three actually, because we've already set up the tripod and mast. And these are the legs and these go on first. This strap here is very handy because it holds everything together. And in the center of this, this is the center mast for the hex beam. And these are the six legs of the hex beam. So this all fits together really well. So I'm gonna take these six pieces out. And he's got these wrapped around the center mast here, and that's okay. There's a couple different ways to wrap these. Uh, these are guy wires is what they are. Paracord type material. There's a couple different ways to wrap these, and you can do it however you want to. But this is probably the most efficient. Yours is going to come this way, wrapped between here and here. Untangle it the way you want to, and when you're ready to pack back up, pack it back up the way you want to. And this right here is the center post that will go on to the build mast that we're gonna have right here. So this piece right here fits over the center spot. I'm gonna open this up, push that down, clamp that down right there. And now we've got the whole thing. So this right here is the BNC connector. This is the BNC feed point. And it's one feed point for all six bands on the antenna. This is 20 meters at the top, it'll be 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6. Now the great thing about the Buddy Hex is that this color black, gray, yellow, red, green, and blue is the same color for all of these wires. This is black and gray. These uh, separators are black and gray. These separators are red and yellow, so that's the 20 meter right there. And these are green and blue, so you know which one goes where. And obviously the 6 meter one is going to be shorter of a wire than the 20 meter one. So it's easy to tell which one goes which. Now, what you can do, and I think what I'm going to do, because this is field day, right? 6, 10, 12 meters, and 17 meters. The yellow and the green one are not allowed at field day. So I think I'm just going to skip those. I'm not going to even put those on today. Like you could put all six on, you could put one on, you could put two on, you could put any combination if you want on. It's all fed from the same feed point, and you can see 
how that looks. The original version didn't have these separators in here. It had a post here and a post here with nothing in the middle of this post. So these, uh, these were added later and they provide stability to the center mast there. So that's really good. So I'm gonna put on, uh, put on these legs next and we'll go from there. Okay, this is one of six legs and all six legs are the same. So it doesn't matter which one you put where. And all of them have three sections. They go together like this, right there. And then you put those in just like that to there, to the center mast. Wow, I've had too much to drink today. There we go. And then that one sits there and all six of them go into each one. And again, it doesn't matter which one is which, they're all the same. So you don't have to put one in a specific spot or something like that. People ask that all the time. So we're gonna put up all six of these after I untangle them. Cause I made a really mess, a big mess here. There we go. And we're gonna put them all out just like we did the first one. So the end of this has a paracord coming out the top and one coming out what I would call the right side. If you look at it like this, it's the right side. If you look at it from here, it's the left side. But the top paracord goes to the center mast. I've got two of the masts up already right here and if you look at this part you zoom in right there it's got a little slit in the end of it and it kind of creates a T after you put it in the centerpiece here so the T's through there and then it's T behind there you can't really see it it's dark anyway but that holds it in place so all six legs connect here and then once you get all six legs placed you will connect this second paracord coming out of each leg to the leg next to it. So at the end, it'll make a big hex beam. <laughs> I mean, it'll make, it'll Makes make a circle. Six legs with that are all connected to the center mast that are also all connected to each other around the perimeter. So that's what we're doing right now. So I have put on the six meter and the 10 meter. And if you look right here, you can zoom in right there. The wires go the, the elements go underneath this is an important part that chris from buddy pole told me so you point this downward like this right here it'll spin all the way around so what you do is you point it downward and you hang the wires underneath the feet right there so this is the six meter obviously this is the 10 meter this is the 12 meter which i'm not going to put up today because we can't use that at field day anyway so i'm stringing up the 15 meter right now unwinding it and stringing it at the same time just kind of clip in right there. And this is the last leg of it here. Okay. This comes over into the V part here and then it, that hook terminal. So before we had the ring terminals on the end of, of the elements and we had to take this piece completely off and put the ring terminal over it and then put this piece back. So with these hook, hook terminals like this, like that, you don't have to do that. So that's an improvement over the last one that I built on a uh, video like this. And if you look, if you come back like this, well, first of all, let me show you this also. These slide down to these stoppers, like this one right here. This is the uh, 17 meter. I'm not gonna hang that one either. But this, you slide them down all the way down as far as they'll go, close to the, uh, as far as they'll go, close to the center. And that's the correct measurement and length of the element. So it's flexible a little bit, but this slides up and down. And then this V right here, this is the direction that the beam is pointed. So when you get it up in the air and you want to rotate it, this is the direction your beam is pointed right here. So you, of course it rotates 360 degrees like this. And this is the way that it's pointed. So right now we're pointed basically uh, east, basically east. But the thing is with a hex beam, I've talked off the side and the back of a hex beam many times. So it's sort of directional, but not really. The way a hex beam works, if you don't know, it's actually two elements. So this part in the middle right here, this is paracord that separates this element, which is, if I get my terminology correct, this is the uh, um, director. And then the back element there is these three legs, which is the reflector. So it's like a two meter yag. So it's got one element in the back, one element in the front that are separated by paracord just to time together. There's not an electrical connection between these two. And then the director 
resonates from the reflector and it points this way. So that's the entire hex beam right there. So we're gonna put, I'm gonna put the 20 meter element on and then uh, we're gonna raise it up. I've got all of the elements on the antenna that I want. So now I've got to lift the hex beam off of the build mast and put it back onto the regular push-up mast so that we can have the antenna set up the way it is supposed to be. So here goes, watch this. This is an oblong mast on the mast works, and it's supposed to keep it from when the wind blows it from turning around the mast. A lot of round masts, when the, uh, when the beam gets turned by the wind, it'll just kind of turn around the mast. This one's supposed to keep that from happening, and pretty much it does. It's got a little bit of movement, a little bit of play in it, but for the most part, it keeps it from moving. So now we just gotta put it up. We need to do the guy wires now, so that's the next part. Today's video is sponsored by Kyle's Tackle Box. <laughs> so this video today is sponsored by Mezzi and Poloni Coax. It's not messy, but it's very clean. This is the Ultraflex 7 Sahara, and we've run this. I know we've run the Sahara on the on the uh, Buddy Hex before. I mean, maybe not the 7, I don't know. It was one of them. It was the Sahara. Check out the link in the description below. Save a 5% discount at Giga Parts with the K coupon code of kc 5 hwb for this very, very awesome coax. Also, do not set up the hex beam without putting the coax on first. I'm not gonna tell you how I know that. So this is the BNC feed point that is made by, by Buddy Pole, obviously. This will handle about six, maybe 700 watts, something like that. I personally run 550 watts from my KPA 500 through this connection into the Buddy hex. The Buddy hex itself will handle legal limit but he's working on a new connector that will be, I believe SO239 that will be legal limit. So this one actually won't handle 1500 watts. I think he said this one will do up to a kilowatt, maybe 900 watts, something like that. But I don't know, ask Chris at Buddy Pull and see what he says, but we're only running hundred watts for fuel day, so it doesn't matter. So I've got this all connected up and I'm gonna connect it, uh, I'm gonna strap it down here. So the hex beam was a pretty much a fantastic hit all weekend. Between it and the DX Commander, we were able to work all the bands we wanted to work, including six meters, which sadly was not really, we never really saw any activity on six meter FT8. So, oh well, I, I tuned over there a few times, never really saw much, but uh, it was on fire on Thursday when we were here. We were, walk, we were working some six meter FT8 Thursday night. And wow, I was hoping it would be like that for field day, but no such luck. One thing I didn't, I say I didn't do it properly. It, it got set up correctly and that's fine. But there's a specific way to set up the Mastworks tripod and guy it before you put the hex beam on it. And since I did the hex beam build video this time, I just kind of haphazardly put up the Mastworks tripod. But I realized that not even in my last video did I show how to put up the Mastworks tripod correctly, the way that Buddy Pole suggests it. Again, you can do it however you want to, but there's a really easy way to do it that makes sense. So next time we'll hit that one, check the links in the description below and thank you.